If you're preparing for the NLSAT examination, this video is going to be very important for you because in this video, I'm going to teach you how to read the editorials, how to read closely, how to think analytically for this examination so that you can make an argument frame in your mind, you question kar pao. You know how to read things well and develop questions by your own in your head so that you can prepare better for this examination. Let's start with this video. Hi guys, I'm Ayushi, your mentor for law-based examinations and welcome to Law Digest. So what I've done is I've picked up one article, this relates to Manipur violence case and uh, this, this I've picked up from the Hindu newspaper. Any editorial you can pick up. As I mentioned to you, when I discussed the strategy video, I told you already in the strategy video that what you can do is you can pick up editorials and read them. Understand what the author is trying to say. That's the process that we are going to do in this video. So, uh, what we are going to do is, we are going to understand what does this editorial actually speak of. Uh, what are the different terms? We do English meaning. It might happen, you, you know, the vocabulary might not be at par. We can always understand the tone and tenor of the passage and uh, think analytically. Now, what are we More than three months since ethnic violence broke out in Manipur, there are still or uh, little or no signs of lasting peace meaning he three months already three months have already elapsed so now let's begin festering wounds is the topic here more than three months since ethnic violence broke out in manipur there are still or no signs of lasting peace meaning that it has been long three months have already elapsed you know maybe when you're reading the newspaper you can pick up the pen make small noting on the side that three months have lapsed and Still, there is no peace. So, the violence has not died down. So, try to, you know, frame the sentence in other, other uh, way. That, you know, rather than saying no signs of lasting peace, what else can be said? What can be said? Here, as I said, that there is still violence that is prevailing. Uh, fights are still prevalent. So, peace ka opposite to a conflict. Conflict still prevails. So, things like these. It's a, it gets better. When you get down to questions, you will always, you know, be able to identify the, the different sentences that are used. You will be able to, you know, sort out that what is it trying to actually say. You won't get confused that ye to pura confusion ho gaya about the passage. So, you have to get into this mental exercise. From competing groups imposing blockades of arterial roads to sporadic attacks resulting in deaths, conflict is rife with incidents suggesting breakdown of law and order. Now, this can become really tough for you to read at one go. How will we break this down? In your head, simply understand this. When you are reading, you have to be fully focused. From competing groups importing, uh, imposing blockades. Yani, basically, what is it? It is trying to say that these groups, we already know. A basic knowledge aapko hoti hai aur ki. Now, here, the basic knowledge is there are two groups, Methi and Kuki community. Now, we know that these two groups are blocking the roads. So, you can remove this word. If you don't understand arterial, you can remove this or, you know, you can look up the dictionary for your vocabulary. But, for meanwhile, we are not as such focusing on vocabulary. We are focusing on understanding the passage and analyzing it. So, here it says blockade of, uh, blockades of roads jo hai, that is done by these communities. Then what else is done? Sporadic attacks. Koi ek pattern nahi hai. Random attacks ho rahe hai. Resulting in what? Deaths. Conflict is rife with incidents uh, suggestive of breakdown. Law and order has broken down completely. There is no control. Police is not able to control things. Conflict is rife. Now, you know, question yourself. Why does the author feel that the conflict is rife? Or what are the circumstances that are suggesting that the conflict is rife? So, Right meaning the conflict is prevalent, the conflict uh, is widespread. So, what are the uh, things we can infer from this particular sentence that there is blockade, roads blocked, hai. then there are attacks, police cannot control the situation. So, these things are showing us that the conflict is right. Now, it might happen ki pura passage padenge, to we might get on uh, certain more sentences, we might understand from there also why is the conflict rife. So, depending on what kind of question has been given to you, you can answer accordingly. Here, we are doing a mental exercise for ourselves. Then, another indication of the state of affairs is difference in perception between police and paramilitary uh, Assam, uh, police and paramilitary Assam rifles with 
unedifying acts such as fir being lodged by police against latter uh, so against the paramilitary force for obstructing it from discharging its duties so this is another indication so this is another indication of what that the conflict is rife that is what we see then far from moving away from the ethnic quagmire and in search of a detente the situation is more like a powder keg so basically what it says is ki situation die down hone ki jagah hai shant hone ki jagah hai things are not being able to reach to a peaceful conclusion rather the situation is like a powder keg keg meaning it is very explosive gunpowder ka jo barrel hota hai so it can explode any time any time something might happen things will explode up that is what they are trying to say people are still in relief camps and many houses have been destroyed and anyone seeking peace has been subjected to violence or threat uh, also attest to this unfortunate fact so this is some complicated wording but what does it actually mean that these things are also vouching for the fact that conflicts exist what are these things that many houses have been destroyed uh, violence is there people have been subjected to different threats so ye hamari understanding banti hai then india's mainstream polity had an opportunity to use monsoon session of parliament jo presently we know ki monsoon session abhi khatam ho ke chuka hai ki parliament could have used is uh, used this to uh, to work towards reconciliation but that opportunity was seemingly lost as the prime minister and home minister they had little to say beyond homilies uh, on what needs to be done even as the opposition sought to pin down the government for the failures uh, in order to score a political point so think about it what is it basically trying to say ki monsoon session mein what opportunity the government had the government had the opportunity to address this situation to bring a reconciliation but they did not uh, do anything apart from you know making general preachings and uh, opposition tried its best to pin them down because again elections ki baat hai political agenda rehta hai har cheez mein so that is what here it's being said so if we you know maybe give you a situation you think of a situation that what can be the other way uh, how can you say it otherwise or you know what can weaken this if you know you've been given certain situations that rather uh, you know uh, the central government is working towards this the central government uh, came out with new laws at the same time the central government so these things will weaken this stand that here what the author is trying to say ki abhi jo present mein government hai unhone zyada effort nahi liye in the monsoon session now if i make a statement on the contrary that uh, in the monsoon session major criminal reforms were passed so this is directly affecting the statement of the author so things like these you have to think it through that what can be the options these things you have to practice if you want more help we are obviously providing you with a lot of passages in our module it's available on our website if you want to check www.lordigest.in wherein this work of framing questions has already been done for you and you have to practice but here it is at the same time important to understand how are we supposed to go about our reading process then events in manipur so far suggest that the ethnic conflict fact festers because of the intractable positions between the two leaders yani two leaders nobody is ready to budge the metis refuse to acknowledge the sense of bias in the state government action especially by the chief minister that have alienated the uh, huki and its representatives cutting across party lines now here think otherwise metis have refused to acknowledge the sense of bias what does it mean what is the author trying to imply the author is trying to say there are two groups methi and kuki the government is uh, you know favoring methi community which is why they are not able to see the bias the bias is against kuki because they have been alienated so you will find your answers in these statements only just that you have to read closely understand things better that is how you will be able to analyze things in your head then the latter seeks to harp on the idea of separate administration latter meaning kuki Kuki wants a separate administration, which is complicating the fragile coexistence of ethnic identities. Jo statement included hai Methi Kuki. Further, there is Naga community. So they feel the author feels that they want a separate administration. Now you can also think of situations where, you know, if I question you that is this justified? What is the circumstance where we can say that 
this idea of cookie or uh, if they are hanging on to this idea, how is it justified? Which of the following statement uh, supports their idea? So, you know, maybe we can say that uh, they will not, in a view of the recent order that was passed by the court, high court, they would not get the lands to them. They are in minority. Things like these, they will help you. Current affairs, obviously, you have to stay updated with what's going on around in the country. That you have to read, you have to read your newspapers. Apart from that, you have to practice reading here, reading closely. Again and again, I'm telling you, read things closely. Whenever you're studying the passages, read closely. Whether coaching or you're practicing by yourself, you're reading up, try to keep a notebook on the side and try to write down things. That what this statement is trying to say, question yourself. Then moving forward, the refusal of civil society representative to uh, rise above their ethnic differences has excavated the conflict which has worsened due to lack of accountability on the state government and its refusal to change its leadership. Meaning, agar hum, uh, ye baat kare ki, what has worsened this conflict? You know, if the author is trying to, uh, if you are given a question like this, that what has worsened the conflict? Then you can speak about this thing that state apni accountability nahi manra, state is not ready to accept uh, these things and they are not even changing their leadership. Then Manipur is a vital uh, border state and continuing disturbance between these two will have a lasting impact on future generations severely hampering progress. The union government choices are clear. They can either continue with the narrow minded emphasis on not giving into any critique uh, even if constructive. Now, what does, let's take a pause here. What does it mean? It means to say ki, ab government ke paas kya hai? Do choices hai. The choices are clear. Ye, either they stick to this, their approach, narrow-minded approach, kaun si hai? What is the approach which author is trying to call narrow-minded? That you are silently listening to the critique, you are not responding and uh, you are not giving into any critique. Even if, you know, there's a constructive debate that's happening, you are not giving into it, you're not talking about it. That is what the author is saying, that narrow-minded approach. Hai. Then the second approach is, let the situation fester into an uneasy status or take up the gauntlet, wear those gloves and bring about substantive changes in the state le leadership heralding towards reconciliation. That is the other step that they put their foot down, they get into action and bring about a reconciliation. Ye seconds, uh, the other side that the central government can adopt, the other option that is available to them. So, if we understand from this and we see ki author ki tone kaisi hai, you will understand that author is sort of critical of the government, especially when the author said ki monsoon session mein unhone kuch asa kiya nahi. Opposition ne pin down karne ki koshish kari. So, again, uh, thoda critical bhi hai, but at the same time neutral bhi hai because they also said that opposition tried to pin them down because political agenda is there, elections are closer. Then here, they've uh, again been critical ki ya to they can continue their narrow-minded emphasis. This is very important here because this shows that the author is not thinking too high of the government, that what approach the government is holding. What the author wants out of the government, that you wear those gloves and take substantive changes towards changing the situation, reconciling. That is what the author is trying to infer here. The author wants that... Uh, so, you know, what is the, if we are asked, what is the objective that the author is trying to get at? What is the author trying to infer? What is the mode, uh, tone, tenor of this passage? Does the author support? So, if you have read this passage, you have clarity that the author is point of view. You have read the whole thing. Now, you can process it by yourself that what are the terms? This way, what really helps you is the concluding part. The concluded and also the beginning part. They are very important introduction, conclusion. They help you in understanding ki author kis ki side hai, author ka kya view hai. And beech beech mein you will see vocabulary terms aate rahe. Then they can ask you GK based questions also, current affairs based question also. Maybe you know GK based mein we saw asylum rifles ke paramilitary forces ki baat kari gai. So you know maybe they can ask you, um, uh, jab JNK ka division hua tha to Mahapar bhi boundary commission aiti. So, Assam ke relation mein they can ask you, NRC ke relation mein they can ask you. So, things can date back prior to the period uh, that we are considering. When you are reading such passages, make sure because there is no end to these passages. So, we can't give you an exhaustive list. But 
वेन यू आर रीडिंग एनी पैसेज वट एवर पैसेज यू पिकड अप ट्राई टू मेक श्योर कि उसमें जो टर्म्स आ रहे हैं उससे रिलेशन में जो जीके है उसके बारे में थोड़ा थोड़ा आपको पता हो यू हैव दट अवेयरनेस बिकॉज ट्वेंटी थ्री में वी हैव सीन दैट कुछ एक दो क्वेश्चन हैं जो ऐसे पूछे गए हैं विच वर नॉट इन कॉन्टेम्पलेशन so that you can prepare i hope this session was of use to you you were able to understand how to read closely how to identify what the author is trying to say how to get that uh, analytical understanding of the passage and um, let's see i'll come out with more sessions let me know if this session was of use for you and i'll come out with more sessions if you would like to help you guys understand ki kaise hum passage ko padhte hain how to read the passage in case you have any query doubts drop down the same in the comment box below in case you're looking for module for practice for understanding concepts then you can check our website www.lordigest.in jahan par you will find the nlsat course further make sure that you are following the channel because these videos keep coming up legal current affairs keeps coming up and uh, general guidance regarding your law entrance also keeps coming up so follow the channel uh, follow us on instagram and subscribe to the channel